go work. Welcome. All right, this is Mazingo <sighs> Makes Stuff Live, Wrath of the Amana Jaku, Chapter 8. And uh, we'll have to go away from this picture of Shinky so we can get to the my desktop view. Let me arrange the windows real quick. Where did we leave off last time? I don't think I was here for the last time. <laughs> okay, I think we were at a... Uh... I remember... I remember being it showing up before, but I don't recall how long ago that was. We are at the part where, uh... Here. Okay, so last time on Wrath of the Amanajaku, let me arrange the chat window so I can see it. Okay, the heroines have uh, just arrived. Seija wants to uh, use the coming of the uh, heroines to uh, get Sukuna to give up the uh, power of the mallet. And most of it is uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of the fight scenes are actually kind of silent. Okay, so Raiko is uh, busting in, fighting her way through. The heroines are busting in, fighting their way through. Hey, hey, Chronic. Hey. You okay. okay. I could have sworn that we uh, we had that. Uh, like I don't know uh, like where we last left off on. Okay. Let's see, Raiko's fighting through. All I remember was that I'd said, how did, how did it go originally? And that was a spark of inspiration. <laughs> oh, yeah. We actually, uh... Oh, yeah. So that means I could finally put this little moment on stream. Okay, so we were actually at part B last time. So let's do a read-through. And this might make up about 20 minutes worth of stream time. But I think showing off what we have so far is pretty awesome. Plus, it gets me in the mood to continue writing. Hey, okay. Siege. Yo, Siege. Hey. We're going to do a recap real quick, and then we'll get to uh, the actual production part of it. Okay, so where we last left off... Okay, Romilia. Isn't it obvious? For the same reason I know about all the yokai. I'm a hardcore Japanophile! Okay, and you guys can stop me at any time to tell me if something doesn't uh, seem right. All right, and I'm thinking of setting it up earlier where Tenma, like her, like Tenma's getting a little jaded with Gensokyo and says like, all this is to eventually set up. All this is to later eventually Hello. set up. Oh, sorry, what was that? We hear you. Yeah, he was just testing out the uh, the voice activity. Yep. Sorry, I didn't think it would pick up while I was playing around with the settings. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, I want to set up earlier that, like, Tenma's a little jaded about, like, the future of, like, the Tengu and everything, but at the end of this, it's set up so it l later paves the, the way for Hidden Star Four Seasons. But for now, this is, like, the low point of Gensokyo. Tenma. Then if that is the case, I'm afraid we are already too late. Romilia. Nonsense! Hikari and I have a few backup plans. We can still beat the Amanajaku. Tenma. That's not what I meant. Miss Scarlet, the Amanajaku would have never been able to convince the weak she was their savior if Gensokyo wasn't already falling apart. And Romilia is taken aback by this. Tenma. Between Gasp. the recent... What was that? Gasp. All right. Between the recent Holy War, the battle between the Moria and the Hakare Shrine, and everyone vying for influence of the human village, is it any wonder this rebellion happened? Right now, the Amanajaku is but a stone's throw away from attaining the Mount's full power, and we are hopelessly outmatched and outnumbered by our legions. But even if by some miracle we do win, what then? We still have to face the fact that this land is more divided than ever. Romilia, angry. What other choice do we have? Find a new land? Erect a new border? Because I'm not budging. As far as I'm concerned, Gensokyo is my home. Tenma, honestly, it would be a better use of our time. 
We're better off taking a chance, starting from scratch, and staying for a fight that can't be won. Tell me, Miss Scarlet, knowing everything we're up against, and what little there is to gain if we win, can you truly look me in the eye and tell me Gensokia was worth saving? Romilia, smiling. Ha. Huh. You really are an idiot, Tenma. Romilia dramatically points to the giant cast around her. Look around you. Gensokia was never divided. Let's see. Let's see. Sandra says, Hey Spaz, how does Woda start the development of the comic? If you mean, like, how do we get around to actually producing the frames, that's going to come later. But luckily at the end of this part, you're actually going to see some of the finished frames for... What is probably my most famous scene, uh, my most favorite scene of all of Wrath of the Amanajaku, in addition to this one. And uh, Romilia points to the cast as she describes them. Gensokia was never divided. Tengu fighting alongside Celestials, Kappa fighting alongside Shrine Maidens, Lunarians and Yokai, gods and vampires. We are all natural enemies, and yet here we are, fighting to save each other. Meanwhile, at the Moria, at the uh, Muran Temple, Ikari points at a map. If we go into er if we go into early, Seija will spot us. Romilia, even the Buddhists and the Taoists, week a weeks after their holy war, are joining forces with the Yokai Sage. Meanwhile, up in the storm, Raiko speaks to Remo, uh, Remo and everyone. Once Seija is distracted, we must retrieve the mallet. Romilia, let's see. Are joining forces with the Yokai Sage to save a shrine maiden, a witch, and the greatest maiden in Sokyo. Who are all working with us? Uh, who are all working with Atsuka Mogami to save everyone? It is true we've all taken uh, part in petty incidents. I am no different, and as long as Gensokyo exists, I know there'll be plenty more. But have we forgotten that this is all just a game, just an eternal game in a fantasy paradise? Slight fourth wall break. <laughs> have we forgotten what Gensokyo's peace was built on? Have we forgotten the lessons of the vampire incident and the Scarlet Weather Rhapsody? Skeptical Tenma. What lesson? That Gensokyo's peace never lasts? And even if we be and if we become complacent, anyone can ruin it? Romilia. Not in the least. Gensokyo's peace was built on knowing that if it ever does come to that point, all of Gensokyo, human or yokai, can set aside their differences for just one moment and unite as one. For as petty as we are, we're not petty enough to let this paradise die. That is why I still believe Gensokyo is and will always be worth fighting for. And why you, Tenma, are a disgrace to the very yokai who invented war. Aya, shocked. Whoa, did did Romilia actually just show off her charisma for once? Patchouli, you do well to not underestimate the mistress. There's a very good reason she's the head of the Scarlet Devil Mansion. Despite her vampiric impulses and her childish behavior, she knows much, much more than you think. How's that scene so far? Thank you. Good. <laughs> Alright. <gasps> what the? Oh, God. Alright, Tenma. Tenma's speaking, Momiji and everyone else behind her. Miss Scarlet, you do realize that if Seija attains the power of the mouth, we're all doomed, right? Momiji, speaking behind her. With all due respect, Lord Tenma, if this is how this all ends, at least we'll all go out fighting for something we believe in. Nitori. Yeah, Gensokyo's our home. We can't just abandon it. Count the cap in, too. Sanai. Well, we don't have much of a choice. Let's do our best, everyone. Let me get the song for the next part. Okay. It's queued up. Okay, Tenma. So that's how it is. Even you, Officer Inubashiri. You care about this land so much that you will fight the impossible to save it. Slight pause. Tenma, count me in. <laughs> Romilia, excellent. Now then, y Yukari, the Muran Temple, and the Daos will wait until Sage is distracted to retrieve the Miracle Mount. Yuko, we still stick to the original plan. We are the rescue party. However, our numbers are still not enough for the rogue Tsukimogami. If we are going to have a chance of stopping Seija, we are going to need a Gensokyo wide alert. Tenma, this is where the Tengu come in. Tenma, I know where this is going. Officer Shamemaru, looks like you're finally going to send out that alert. Aya. Understood, but I can't do it alone. Looking at Momiji. I'm going to need an escort. Momiji, think you can, uh, think you can keep up? Momiji, are you kidding? Who will 
owns the skies! A bunch of wolf tango. Wolf wing owns the skies! Oh! Momiji. <laughs> Aya, you might be a bird brain and a second-rate rider, but if we make it through this, you'll be remembered as a hero to the Tengu. Aya, looking at all the other Tengu. All right, scramble, everyone. I want everyone off the ground in two minutes. Fly fast, fight hard, and spread the word. There'll be a reward for the defeat or the capture of the Amana Jaku. Atate runs up to Aya. Hey, Aya. Atate. Atate. I'm, uh, sorry. I got desperate to beat out your newspaper. I should just follow the same advice and... Uh, uh, I told you and just worked harder on my own paper. All this is my fault and Aya. Look, you want to make it up to me? Get out there and spread the word. If Seija wins, neither of us will have a paper. Aya, don't worry. The guilt of knowing you put Gensokyo in danger is a far better punishment than anything I can think of. Now come on. We have an overdue news report. Tengu watch, uh, Tenchi watches as the Tengu take to the skies. Rumilia approaching Tenchi. Well, well, it seems you couldn't just stay out against Sokyo, could you? Perhaps this time you could put that destructive power to good use. Tenchi. I already plan on it, Rumilia. Might as well, uh, enjoy what little time I have before the Celestials catch me down here. Rumilia. I could feel it on you, Miss Hinanaoi. You still think you can't be forgiven for what you did. But if it's any help, I still had a lot of fun, even though the rain kept me inside. And in a strange way, you brought Gensokyo closer together than before, so be proud of yourself. Familia reaches, uh, uh, pulls out a pink bottle and pours it into a glass. Here, I never had a chance to give this to you. One last drink before the final battle. Tenji inspects the glass. Huh? Peach sake? Familia. Lunarian peach sake. Long story behind it, but it's a token thanks for relieving my boredom. It's a token of my thanks for relieving my boredom. You guys know what that's a reference to, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Alright. Oh, did Opie say she doesn't? It's a reference to Silent Center in Blue, which, funny enough, takes place slightly after Scarlet Weather Rhapsody. I haven't read that. <laughs> well, let's just say the Peach Sake becomes uh, a pretty important plot point. More important than you'd think it would be. <laughs> also, that sounds fucking delicious. <laughs> Alright. Tenchi smiles down at the glass. Ha! Huh. Well then, here's the many more years of causing chaos together. Romilia, cheers, Peach Girl. <laughs> okay, let me get the song uh, queued up for this one. Uh, hey, Chris, do you want anything to drink? What? No. Sorry. Okay. Everyone looking at uh, Shining Needle Castle from a, dis uh, from a distance. Ryko speaking. This is it. Shining Needle Castle. Inside uh, lies both Seija and the Miracle Mallet. Sakya looks down at her clock. We have 12 minutes until Moonfall and the arrival of everyone else. Let's get in there, get the mallet, and hope that mallet uh, and hope the mallet does what the legends say it does. And here's the cool thing: a lot of the frames are already finished for this, so get ready. And hope the mallet does what the legends say it does. Too right. Loading page. I can't believe we're betting the lives of everyone against Sokyo on some stupid Oni mallet. I hear you, Marissa. But if I was betting everything on that, I would have quit already. Because here we are in the mouth of hell. And we made it this far by leaning on each other. Loading next page. Ha. Huh. Whether it was blind luck or suicidally brave courage, in all my life I've never seen anything like what you three humans have pulled off. That mallet might be the key to stopping the Yamana Jaku. But it's our sweat and blood that'll win the day. After everything we've been through together, past all the fire and fury, the one thing I know is that we can count on each other to save this land. Or give our lives trying if that's what it takes. And the sunrise breaks over the horizon and everyone's watching. And we get this big badass close-up of all the characters looking out. <laughs> and, then, and then it goes down to the Boom Boom Maru Press. Because some things are just worth fighting for. <laughs> <laughs> All that is a giant uh, StarCraft 2 reference. And yes, Sandra, that is exactly uh, how I do this. In fact, 
And yes, you, you can do it all transparently. As you can see, uh, Reimu's on a separate layer. The uh, All the objects are on separate layers. Like this, uh, this, let's see. The debris is on a separate layer. The picture frame is on a separate layer. I'm exporting all these into Comipo and editing, editing them from the program. <laughs> so how is that little sequence? <laughs> if this doesn't scream the total and complete opposite of Diamond in the Rough, I don't know what will. <laughs> I don't know how to say words in this moment, so I'm just shaking, man. <laughs> Would there be an animated adaption? Holy crap. <sighs> I, I do like plan on there is a program to make like co like video versions of it. For this, I'll allow anyone video. to make an like a video adaptation of it as long as they don't stray from the script. Like with this, like it's already storyboarded out, so there's really no reason to do it. So like you could easily like do a video adaptation without having to like worry about oh what are they gonna say? It's like no, all the lines are right here. So yeah, anyone can animate it. And uh, Siege, if you're still interested, this would probably be way easier than a Diamond in the Rough adaptation because it's all, again, uh, it's already storyboarded. Uh, he's uh, downstairs making coffee. Okay. All right, anyway. Meanwhile, inside Shiny Needle Castle, Sukuna and Seija look out the window. Seija, look out there, Shin Maru. Do you see what they've all done to Gensokyo? Shinomaru. It's horrible! Why would they destroy their own land like this? Seija. They are all insane. If anyone even hints at opposing them, they will be destroyed. They will even betray their friends just to stay in power. Our rebellion has them backed into a corner like a wild animal. That's when they'll fight back the hardest. Seija, I am scared! Don't worry, my little Shinomaru. No matter what happens, I will be by your side to the bitter end. <laughs> Let's see. But this rebellion will end in our victory and my eternal reign. Soon the weak will rule over this land, united under my rule. No more hypocrite shrine maidens or false gods. Instead, looks back at the psychotic smirk, I will be your new god. Tsukumugami runs in. Lord Seija, we have an emergency. The yokai hunters and the rogue drum have broken into the castle. Seija. They're here for the miracle mallet. They're here for the miracle mallet. Shinomaru, protect the mallet at all costs. If they get here, call for help. I'll take care of them myself. Actually, yeah, Ord, I'd say like the comic is good on its own too. Like, I have a disclaimer saying like don't do any fan fiction derivatives of this, but if you want to make I guess dubs or whatever, you're free to do that. Okay. I mean, I'd, I'd totally be into doing that. Alright. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sukuna. But Seija, what will we do? They're complete monsters. Will you be okay? Seija grabs an umbrella. Don't you worry. They're not the only ones who can cheat. That's right, the Gap Umbrella. Not only can the Yokai Sage not tunnel in, but it should pr prove useful against the Yokai Hunters. The Miracle Mallet can make many more tools like this. In fact, it is entirely possible, reaches into her back po pocket, pulls out the replica mallet, to share the mallet's power through a replica. Sukuna, Seija, we can't test it at a time like this. I want to share it, but I'm afraid it could use all the mallet's power. I'm sorry, but I need the mallet's power for an emergency. Frustrated Seija, she shrugs. Fine, I have absolutely no problem with this. I suppose I can make do without direct control of the mallet's power. But remember, Shin Maru, if worse comes to worse, you know what to do. Closes the door. Yakimo, you clever old hag. You stalled the Buddhist and the Taoist, didn't you? I suppose I no longer I suppose I can no longer use them to scare the Inchling into giving me the power of the mallet. But not to worry, the incident resolvers have arrived. I wonder, Yakimo, did you really plan this far ahead? Well, let me get the song queued up for this next part. Castle sinking in the air.
Okay. This is certainly going to be interesting. Okay then, let the games begin. Alright, queuing the music. Reimu, Marissa, Sakia, and Mariko break into the castle, blowing up all the Tsukumogami around them. Reimu to Raiko. Raiko, can you still feel the mallet's power? Barely, but I can feel it deeper in the castle. Look, you may be strong, but you're nowhere near strong enough to face Seija. That said, do you think you can retrieve the mallet alone? It is, this, it, is, it is as if my whole life has led up to this moment. For the sake of all Tsukumogami, I will take that mallet back. Then go get him, drum girl! We are... Time we bust ourselves on a Manajaku! Tsukumogami rush in. There they are, stop them! Okay, so this is mostly action sequence right here. Tsukumogami uh, pins up Raiko against the wall. You filthy traitor! Yeah! Bla Raiko blaster of Lei. Appalled Raiko. I cannot believe it's come to this. Make sure Seija pays for what she's done. Runs down the hall, looks back at Reimu. Re Reimu. Reimu screams back, good luck! Okay, so this is mostly just a giant uh, dialogueless action scene. So we get here. The mount. I can feel it coming from just two floors away. This feels too easy. I may be stronger, but I know a trap when I see one. I must be brave. The fate of the Tsukumogami rests on me. Raiko Duck says the Tsukumogami fire in behind her. There she is! Get the traitor! Desperate Raiko. Stop! I do not want to fight you! Let's see. Raiko dodges their shots. You betrayed us for the users. A week will rise. I'm sorry for what I must do. Raiko blasts the Tsukumogami to bits. Raiko looks in horror at the fragments of the Tsukumogami that she KO'd. Crying Raiko. Seija, I will never forgive you for this. I have to get that mallet back. I must put an end to this. I will not keep fighting my own people. Okay, Ray Raymu and Co. battle their way through. Reimu blasts away from the Tsukumogami, they're getting desperate. Stop them! Stop them! Everything turns black and white. Sa Sakia smiles. She throws knives, throws even more knives, throws even more uh, knives. Sakia does a Dio pose, and time flows once again. <laughs> <laughs> the knives impale all the Tsukumogami around them. Reimu. Oh, jeez! Marissa. Dang, Sakia, you've outdone yourself! Thank you. It helps you protect me while I'm a, while my while my abilities recharge. Okay, Saki looks back at the giant group coming in. You hear that? The maid's out of power. Get the Then Remu's wand flies in and obliterates everyone. Remu grabs it. Irritated Marissa. Think he's a weapon ain't trying to possess you. Raiko better get that mouth so we can fix our weapons pronto. I'm getting sick of not getting to use my Hakaro. And uh note to self. Maybe I should treat my Hakaro better. Meanwhile, Lord Seija, they're just too strong. There's three of them, and they're super powerful. Seija, do not be afraid to sacrifice yourself in the name of the weak. Do not let their fear tactics force you to back down. Only through sacrifice can we build a future for the weak. Concerned Tsukumogami, Lord Seija, they're already in the castle, and we're too tightly grouped together. And you said they had a rescue coming, so we can't even keep them from escaping. Scary Seija, after previously talking about scare tactics, don't you get it? There is no surrender. <coughs> Hard doing that voice. Uh, welcome, Kibatsu. And welcome, the weapons. I don't think I've seen you around before. Never seen them before. <laughs> and uh, yes, Diamond Black, you can take the audio from this if you want to. They are not here to take prisoners. Oh, what was that? But yeah, hey, welcome. Just uh, the weapons. <laughs> They're not here to take prisoners. They're here to kill every last one of us with no remorse. Shied Tsukumogami. But Lord Seija, I just came from Genbu Ravine, and everyone who caused the previous incident is still alive. Perhaps you were wrong about the Hakurei Shrine Maid. It's not too late to surrender. You know what they say, better a live dog than a dead lion, right? And also that's a reference to Impossible Spell Card. Seija's hand glows. Seija, fl Seija flips the Tsukumogami into the ceiling. She's a spy for the strong! Kill her! Pin Tsukumogami. No, I was just... They all blast her in mass. Liar! Scary Seija. Anyone uh, who wants to surrender is secretly working for the strong. Kill them without remorse! After my previous comments about the... Not... Uh, let's see. One Tsukumogami raises her hand. The rest look angry. 
Hey, I want to surrender too, but I don't work for the strong. I kill the traitor! The Tsukumogami battle themselves. Seija creepily smiles in the background. Close up of a creepy smiling Seija. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you all. Good, good. <laughs> I'm actually legit scared. Slaves of the strong have no free will. If you surrender, you'll be forced to believe what they want you to believe, and they'll kill you without hesitation. Unlike me. Oh, yeah. But under my rule, the weak will be free to think as they please. And I'll protect anyone who wants to think differently. Aren't I such a benevolent ruler? And half the crowd is like, what the fuck? But the other half is, uh, like, smiling. Creepily. But then a hail of Danmaku comes out and blows up the crowd. Seija. What the? Reimu and the rest of the characters point their weapons at the camera. Time's up, Seija! You! This is no place for humans. Leave at once! Reimu, do you really think I'm just gonna say okay and leave? Marissa, you've been plotting to overthrow Gensokyo! Sakya, and I will show no mercy to anyone who wishes to plunge, uh, plunge Gensokyo into chaos. Seija, chaos? That's just like you humans not to understand the plight of the weak. Our history is full of disgrace and oppression, but now, now is the time for revenge! All right, Seija's hands start glowing, the Tsukumogami start uh, pouring in. Seija flips Reimu to the ceiling while dodging Reimu uh, Sakya's knives. Basically, Seija's going sans on all the different characters. Oh yeah, and because she has the gap umbrella, Seija can like dive through gaps and shoot at everyone too. So a lot of this is like mostly silent uh, combat scene stuff. Okay. Marissa gets pinned to the wall and gets shot at by the Tsukumogami. Ah, that's gonna leave a mark. Cover me, I gotta recover. Shocked Reimu. Seija can open gaps, and that fabric. Uh, oh yeah, she's also using the nimble fabric to uh, shield herself from the bullets. Nim 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 nimble fabric? What? That's what it's called, at least. Let me pause the song real quick. Not Isaac, I-S-C. Toho Wiki. I've never heard that. Yes, the nimble fabric. Main ability. <laughs> what? Allow allows her to hide the nimble, thus uh, becoming invincible for a short amount of time, during which she cannot move or shoot. It allows two uses, uh, but only when uh, the main item is unusable. Get fucking bamboozled. In fact, all these items become, <laughs> like, uh... Seija uses all these items in the finale. She uses the nimble fabric to shield herself. If they kill her, she can use the ghastly send-off lantern to become invincible, and then she revives herself with the Jizo statue. Uh, she... Actually, can you excuse me for a sec? I think uh, Chris is done with coffee. Okay. I'm thinking for the sake of convenience, for the bloodthirsty yin yang orb, Seija just steals Reimu's yin yang orb. Let's see, and, uh, let's see. Welcome, you, cat. Let's see, I'm gonna wait on Ophi real quick. But otherwise, uh, we're all, uh, everything seems good, right? Uh, yeah. Wait, so no objections, or? Oh, give me a sec to check some private messages. All right, we're back. Okay, uh, I'm currently uh, off so I can uh, really send some messages out. Alrighty. Okay, anyway, back. And welcome back. Okay, so yeah, we have uh, uh, Sage's arsenal includes the Bloodthirsty Yin Yang Orb, which allows her to teleport, the uh, Tengu Toy Camera, the Gap Umbrella, the Miracle Mallet Replica, which can be used to swipe at uh, bosses. The Jizo statue for revival. The decoy doll to lead away homing bullets. The four-foot magic bomb. 
which is just a giant bomb which can clear around bullets. The ghost lantern and of course the nimble fabric. Mm. Alright, so let's continue the music. I, I wouldn't have known. I have never played uh Possible Spell Card. Yeah, I haven't played that. Okay. I got to play the Toocon. It's actually quite fun, but hard. Yeah. Well, it's a Toho game, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. The only Toho game I've ever been able to beat was, uh... What was it called? Phantasmagoria... Uh... Flower View? Yeah, yeah, that. Oh yeah, that's, that's a fun the... game. Yeah, that's the only one I've ever been able to beat. Oh, that's, that's two-player. And yes, uh, you, you Cat, I heard about Coco yeah. the Gorilla. It's sad, uh, but luckily we learned like so much about how animals communicate from Coco the Gorilla. <laughs> it's almost... It was about 40 years. Yeah. Uh, I've actually never heard of Coco the Gorilla. Um... Coco the Gorilla was a uh, gorilla who was actually quite adept at sign language. And we learned, uh, like, uh -huh. basically what goes on in the mind of animals. We've learned that animals have a very hard time deciphering questions and have a nonlinear language system. But luckily, but they do yeah. use, like, a pictogram image system very similar to early writing styles. And, of course, like, she actually, like, could express empathy, feelings, and other things, and, like... She actually cared for, like, cat... Well, she apparently Coco was, like, a cat uh, gorilla. I'd say cat person, but that would be inaccurate. <laughs> I actually read about that. And, of course, when, like, the, the first cat that Coco had died, like, it mainly used words like sad, not feeling good, like, that. those words constantly. But then got another one and felt better. Though, the, and, of course, it, like, it was even, like... She was even caught lying once, saying, like, oh... It was the cat who pulled that sink out of the wall, not me. <laughs> okay, maybe it might have been me. <laughs> For real? Yep. <laughs> Admittedly, just to go off topic, I kind of do consider the term person to be applicable to a lot of other uh, not, uh, non-human or humanoid uh, creatures. <laughs> All right, it makes sense. Oh yeah, funny enough, All Ball is actually uh, Coco's name. Like, it's it was her way of describing Earth, which I actually find a very cool way for animals to describe Earth as All Ball. So it'd be cool, I guess, to I name a uh, animal after that too. The All Ball. Yes, it's a ball with everything hmm. on it. Earth. <laughs> also, a ball. How long, how long did it take for us to figure out that the Earth was round? <laughs> Thousands <laughs> of years, but then again, we taught Coco a lot of things, and funny enough, Coco apparently had like a brief existential crisis going, Wait a minute, I'm a, I'm a gorilla and you're a human? We're separate species? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's an. Well, this is something. <laughs> it's like here I am learning about human history, and I'm not even human. <laughs> so it just goes to show, like, animal intelligence is pretty freaking crazy. Yeah, Actually, I have a story um, that kind of relates to that. Yeah. Um. Basically, it and this story um actually happened to uh, my mother. Um, basically, she was at a pet store, um, looking at guinea pigs because I wanted a guinea pig at the time. And she saw this guinea pig that had really long fur and it looked like, you know, a toupee. And my mom started laughing at it, like, out loud in the middle of the store. And basically the guinea pig just looked at her like she was, like, literally laughing at nothing. And uh -huh. then my mom said, yeah, I'm laughing at you. And then... The guinea pig, from what my mom said, looked really offended and just scurried back into its little home. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it's proof that animals can be offended. <laughs> yep. It, 
it's crazy. Like when you look at like just like what, like for the longest time, it's like oh, animals don't have any intelligence. But then like animals like Coco get us to realize maybe they're not that different from us. They're not. I mean, we're just the animals that you know took over place. That's all we are. Huh, and you catch us brings up they're actually pretty sentient of death too, which like for the longest time we thought that maybe animals like like the thing that separates humans from animals is that only humans are cognizant of their own death, but apparently here it's like like not really. It's like no, we know we died too. I like it really seems like the big thing is that like Maybe the big difference is, is that humans are better better at asking questions. And of course, better structured language, which allows us to tell stories and come up with memes. <laughs> I mean, memes are like... Yeah. They are like a kind of system that brings us together. I don't know where I was going with that, but I'm keeping it anyway. No, it's okay. It's actually how it's it's specifically how our like the name meme is basically like a memory gene as like was originally defined mm. and without that we wouldn't be able to pass down stories and traditions and everything else and speaking of which let's uh, see if we can knock this out as fast as we can okay so I'm gonna like summarize it so we can catch up to where we were Okay, this is where Seija realizes that, uh... Like, maybe the power of the mouth is starting to create the Tsukumogami on their own. Remus says, this is a violation of spell card rules. And, uh, Seija's like, like, I give a crap about spell card rules. It's only to control the yokai and keeps, uh, the weak from rising up. But as long as you have the power of the mallet, we can become as strong as we want. Oh, yeah, here's a part that I really want you to, uh, folks, to let me know if it's okay that I do. I might set this up earlier... I'm thinking of expanding on the duel between Raymond, Marissa, and Saki in Chapter uh, 4. But here's what happens. One moment. Oh, yes. While I wait, I want to check something real quick. Also, what chapter are we currently on? Chapter 8. Okay, I have a feeling. I especially want to wait for Siege for this uh, next one because it's like one of those big story uh, lore thingamabobs. And uh, Sandra, like, there are specific topics that people are talking about, but it seems you've talked about Smash Brothers for literally the whole thing. In fact, Here's the beginning of the stream. Yeah. We've started off, and it's like, Kirby. Then we were talking about scenes. Romilia looks like Waluigi. Waluigi might team up with Romilia. Time for Smash Brawl. Brawl. Fight must go on now. Time for Smash Ball. Hit the Smash Ball three times. Peachy. The, this wraps up the Brawl. What? Peach, hey, that's my umbrella. Like, what? there's a time and a place for everything, and if we were talking about Smash Brothers, then that would be the time to talk about Smash Brothers. Well... But that's not the here or there, if, <laughs> so... You know you could be asked to leave if you keep at it. Well, I try to be accommodating, it's just... I'll ask politely first, and then slightly less politely the second time. But, wait a minute, Kurchan, what do you mean by are there any love interests? Right? Yeah, you know, every story needs shoehorned romance. Where, Where's where's the shoehorned romance in this? <laughs> please don't. Oh, please. <laughs> well, I do actually, admittedly, there is mild ship teasing between Renosuke and Kane, but it's more platonic than anything. <laughs> I think Kirshan might be a shit poster overall. Well, well that's fine, uh, Kirshan. Actually, there is a uh, love story between uh, 
Because, I mean, look, they even said when the sex moment... Uh, some uh, A few posts oh, yeah, I saw that. I, I, I saw it, but I, I couldn't think of anything to say at the time. Well, actually, there's a very intimate scene between Seija and the mallet. It was tasteful, erotic, but we had to cut it for runtime, politics and all. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah, Siege, you still there? Yes. Okay, I'm going to need you for this part. Okay, so... Oh, oh, no. But what I've had so far is that Sage's flipping ability basically gives her Sans powers. It allows her to, like, flip people into ceilings and walls and stuff. I have not fought Sans, nor have I seen much of his battle, so I don't quite follow. Because Chris is a friggin' pleb. Yeah. Undyne kept splattering me against the wall, and I haven't played Undertale since. But what what's up? Okay, well, basically, to, like, make Sage's flipping ability actually, like, seems funny on paper, but actually pretty hideous in person. And plus, when you actually fight her in-game, her flipping ability is pretty disorienting. So for that, I uh, did that. But here's the big thing. So, Marissa's been downed, Reimu is now stuck on the ceiling, so it leaves Sakia to save the day. Sakia looks at the situation, petrified. Quick, Sakia, think. Even if I freeze time, it won't negate Sage's abilities. But, if Sage's only ability, only, Sage's abilities only allow her to flip things, and she's not particularly strong, I've only ever used my power to alter space on the Scott Devil Mansion, never in combat like the others. Let's actually... But it's all up to me. Here goes nothing. Sakya's hand glows blue. Sakya reaches out her arm. Let her go, Seija! The aura around Raymond disappears. She shakes free. I can move! Whoa! And also, this song cues up. Romantic escape. Light. So now the tide of the battle is turning. <laughs> so, do you think that would make sense if Sakia using her ability to uh, alter space to counter Sage's ability to flip things? The counter flip? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Okay. And then Sage's response is, No, you dirty cheater! <laughs> Can I just say that right now I am completely brain dead? How so? I can't make sense of that! Make sense of what? Make sense of Sakuya's space power counter flip. Sage's flip and flip. She's flipping a flip, so it's like 180 plus 180 equals 360. <laughs> okay, so this is mostly Man, solid. Man, I did a 360 uh, degree <laughs> turn and walked away. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> but yeah, Kirchan, I know about how like some fanfics shove in a uh, romance story and it's quite jarring. I did that on purpose in Diamond in the Rough. <laughs> I th I think it's that uh, what was it? Sakia has time stopping abilities, arguably. It's time and that somehow. It should, it should be time uh, and space. Let's see, Sakia. Oh, time and space. <laughs> most pe most people usually depict it as time uh, stopping. Actually, hold I on. guess it would make sense that it would be time and space. Oh yeah, it says here she can also manipulate space according to the official guidebook and according to Zune's uh, yeah, message right. board, too. <laughs> In fact, the parts of the Scarlet Devil Mansion are also perhaps a bit more... a bit more... perhaps it's a bit more compact than what yeah. you see on the outside. It's much bigger <laughs> on the inside, so she's basically a living TARDIS. I wanted to say non-Euclidean, but that would just, but that just conjures up MC Escher imagery. <laughs> I welcome Wolfus Bandit Sniper. 
Um, Sakuya, the mansion isn't big enough! Make it bigger! <laughs> oh no. Can I just be the first to say that I actually like to Oh well. It's obnoxious! <laughs> it kinda reminds me of like Steve O's Romilia. <laughs> really? In a way, like, uh, there should totally, somebody needs to do either a video or a radio play of Stevo's Vermilia and your Sakia together. Uh, oh, did I ever voice Sakia in anything? I don't recall. Okay, you know what, this is part of my, th this is part of my Toho universe. Sakia is absolutely silent. She is not allowed to speak ever. Hmm. <laughs> Also, Spaz, we still need to do that thing where um, your Marissa meets my Marissa. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, so we're still, like, uh, during a giant fight. Okay. Seija. Need if you cheat, I still have my abilities. Marissa. Then it looks like we're fighting on even ground. Romilia. Uh, no, not Romilia. Remu. Come on, everyone. Let's put an end to this incident right now. Wide shot of the heroines battling Seija as the Tsukumogami uh, flood down the halls of Shine Needle Castle. Meanwhile, on the ground, Yukari, Miko, and Byakuren all, are all looking up at Shine Needle Castle from a distance. Miko. So what's happening? Yukari. Seija is fully distracted. The Inchling is hiding, and the drum is about to fall into the trap and, uh, intended for that fairy. Byakuren. And with that, we could, sli uh, we could slip into the castle undetected and retrieve the mallet. Ikari looks to a gap. Romilia's on the other side. Scarlet, how are things on your end? Never better, Yakimo. We've retaken the Forest of Magic, and I got better news. The fairies are beginning to cease their attack. Uh, fairy. If those stupid Tsukumogami burn down the uh, Gensokyo, there won't be any nature left. And no nature means no fairies. That's why we fairies will fight for Gensokyo. Romilia. <laughs> we'll have your rescue party ready in no time. Well done, Miss Scarlet. See, I told you I can be useful. And when this is all over, you should totally build a statue of me. Like where I'm riding a horse, and I got a spear in one hand and a flag in the other. I can already <laughs> see it now. <laughs> uh, let's defeat the Amana Jaku first before fantasizing about statues, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we get a close up of that statue real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Stonewall Jackson. <laughs> Special thanks to Great Actually, Paper Wolf for that flag. <laughs> I love those horse uh, masks. The, the flag should have her face. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that too. Love also, it. It uh, let's should. see. Uh, horse mask by Mickey Bandy. Skull Kid uh, did the uh, horse body. Uh, I've... I'm using, as much as I like the Revelia face flag, I have a specific uh, flag motif. Like, I'm using Great Paper Wolf's flags for all the different factions so they all match. Yeah, yeah. I know where those those flags are from. Yeah. They're quite cool. Yeah. I need to get myself hey, a who? mask. Great Paper Wolf. They uh, do, like, a bunch of Toho-themed flags. Oh. Uh. Were they in the Walthus community at one point? Uh, no, they're, uh, they're, uh, Toho Reddit. Ah. But they are on DeviantArt. Okay, so I was thinking of someone else. Okay. Concerned Yukari. Once we obtain the mouths, we're gonna need as much support as we can to protect it until we can neutralize its power. Romilia. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Trust me, Akimo, we both know what's gonna happen if Sage unlocks the power of the mouth. So just get it back before it happens, we'll do the rest. Otherwise, you might have to resort to that plan. Okay, Yukari. Let's not let it come to that. Good luck out there, Miss Scarlet. Romilia. Thanks, but you know me. I make my own luck. Byakuren. Um, Lady Yakumo. And let me load up the next part. Oh, wait, that's not the next part. Here should be the... Oh, that's part B. Okay, here we are. Part D. This is the part that I'm currently on. So we're not far away from... from where we are. Okay. Yes, Miss Hijiri. A Byakuren. If I may ask, what exactly is that plan, Ikari? 
I'm glad you asked. In spell card rules, we have what is called the impossible spell card protocol. In, in the event of an existential threat against Sokyo, spell card restrictions are completely lifted, making them undodgeable. Miko. Huh. And I didn't think in Sokyo had the guts to do that. Quite a few argued this scenario like this would never happen, but now it just might. In a not-so-subtle jab at the people who said that uh, Gensokyo avoiding spell card rules would be unrealistic during Diamond in the Rough, years before Impossible Spell Card came out. I, th I and here I was thinking that plan would just be what let now? Flander loose. Would have been oh, Flander's already going to be let loose, but the <laughs> Jizo statue has other plans. But then again, it also counts as the Impossible Spell Card protocol. Okay, excited Miko. Oh man, about time I got to unleash my full power against the yokai! Yukari smacks Miko with a fan. Miss Miko, let me give you a warning. If Seija obtains the full power of the mallet, none of us will be able to defeat her, even at full power. Then if we can't defeat Seija, why use impossible spell cards? Should it come to that, we would only use impossible spell cards to hold her back, until the Hakare Shrine Maiden can take back the power of the mallet herself. Ron, Lady Ukari, I thought you said only an inchling can wield. I know what I said. I'm sorry to be so. Ron, I'm sorry to be so direct, but you are aware that even after a week of isolation within Amana Jaku, the odds of recovery drop to zero, right? And at, at this point, the inchling would rather die than let anyone hurt Seija. Close up of Ukari. There are many great things I have yet to teach Remu. But at least I know, let's see, but at least she knows to never give up, even when others say she can't win. Miko, you got a lot of faith in Miss Hakure, Yakimo. Yakarin, Lady Yakimo, if I may ask, what is your relationship to Miss Reimu? Nervous Yukari. Stern Yukari, if we make it through this, then I'll tell you both. But for now, I will only say this. Let's just say protecting the Hakure Shrine Maiden is important to furthering my goals. Unamused Miko. Jeez, that doesn't sound suspicious as all hell. And from a yokai, no less. Uh, bemused Byakran. Sounds very Yukari like to me, personally. Actually, uh, should I spoil where that's going? <laughs> oh boy. Well, that depends. Will it make me want to slap her or. The total complete opposite of slapping. Like it, this is this is like the complete opposite of Ditter Yukari. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll... After it's all said and done, Raiko ends up thanking Reimu. Like Raiko's all like, "You saved my people, Miss Hakare, and I'll never forget that." And it cuts to Yukari with Byakura and Miko, and Yukari's all like, "Ah, how nostalgic! It reminds me of my younger days in the original Hakare Miko." And uh, Miko and Byakuren are like, okay, it's after the incident. What's your relationship to Reimu? And Ikari's like, I believe you already know the answer. Just look at the drum, Yokai, and you'll know everything. Then uh, Ikari walks over to Reimu and congratulates her. And uh, Byakuren's like, you know, I think I finally have a theory as to why Yukari protects Reimu. Now, it's just a theory, so don't go thinking me or Spaz uh, is saying this is true, but... I think that Yukari protects Reimu because she's paying a debt to the like she's paying a debt to the Hakare family for saving the yokai. And then she goes on to explain like back in the day, uh, the yo like Yukari's original yokai migration plan would have never worked if uh, actually I have the, uh, the I have it on my scratch pad. Let me go to my scratch pad real quick. So it's been a while since I've read it, but in Silent Sinner in Blue, after Reimu was like on the moon for God knows how long, people were like, eh, I guess we gotta get a new Hakurei Maiden. Hmm. I don't quite remember for sure, but I've seen jokes about it here and there. Alright. Okay, here's the exact dialogue that I have in my scratch pad. Okay, Kari walks off to Reimu. Miko, what is that supposed to mean? Reading their desires, the only thing she and the drum yokai have in common is their devotion. 
is their devotion to their people, Byakarin. I think I get it. Huh? This is just a theory, so don't take it as fact, but I think I know why Yukari is so protective of Reimu. The Hakare family saved the yokai from extinction. Without the Hakare border, Yok Yukari's great yokai migration plan would have failed. In return for laying the foundation for this land and saving her people, Miss Yakumo watches over every Hakare shrine maiden, training them, testing them, challenging them, and teaching them. Of course, being a yokai, she can only remain as powerful as she is mysterious. In a sense, she is Reimu's greatest ally, but also her greatest opponent, her guardian and her rival. In a sense, their relationship is the embodiment of the human yokai balance. Yukari needs Reimu, and Reimu needs Yukari. Miko. Like yin and yang, light and dark, two opposite forces needing each other to achieve balance. The very essence of the Tao. Byakuren, the very essence of Gensokyo. Miko, ha. Two opposites needing each other. They look at each other, they look around. A lot has changed since we've been sealed away. Indeed it has. Miko extends her hand to uh, Byakuren. Here's to whatever happens next. If there's one thing we can at least agree on, it's how we hate him on a Jaku. <laughs> they smile and shake hands. Whatever happens, let it be. <laughs> Oi. Oh, and meanwhile, when you Ryakarin says her theory, Yukari's hugging Reimu, and Reimu's like, Get your hands off me, you stupid yokai! <laughs> Shipping alert. But Yukari is so old! <laughs> anyway... Every Toho looks 15. Ew. Yukari's older than that. Yukari's 17. Ew. <laughs> Thousand. That's legal in some states, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are gross! I think... Yes. I think Remu by now would be of legal age, but I honestly don't know. Funny enough... Y'all are gross! I actually was thinking of like a the romance. Yokai age slowly. I thought of something crazy to do if once I finish this. Uh oh. Also, welcome, uh, uh, Malafay. A romance story uh. between a uh, a uh, a guy who works in the, in the sweet shop in the human village and Reimu. Like they're both going to be the same age, but it's like he lives in the village. He's downright terrified of the yokai, but he has to overcome his fear if he's going to be with Reimu. And it all turns out they're gonna like Jeez. keep the Hakari bloodline going. <laughs> so, uh, so, so a male love interest who wasn't arbitrarily gapped in by Yukari. Nope. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> I see what you did there, but a lot of people forget Reimu is a sweet tooth. Hmm. She's so, a what? Like, as early as the yeah, PC98 games, Reimu loves, like, Kate. In fact, there's even a scene in Wrath of the Amana Jaku where she's dreaming of cake. Uh-huh. Okay. Are they still you're saying she's like an inner child or something? I'm confused. Depends on the manga you're reading. Well, even in for uh, Forbidden Scullery, there's a scene where Reimu's like, I should stop by the sweet shop and get some candy. Really? When was this? <laughs> I forgot. I think it was the one, like, funny enough, I think it might have been, like, the post-double-dealing character one, where it's, like, they're investigating, like, uh, the, some of the rogue Tsukumogami. Hmm. I should look at that again, because it's in one of the volumes that made it to the States already. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, let's see. Ikari holds up her orb. I here. We're halfway done. Sending out the. We're halfway done sending out the alert. Is everyone in position? We are ready. We're moving in to intercept, intercept the mallet. All right, everyone. It's showtime. Miko, Byakuren, our target is the south balcony. As soon as uh, as soon as you see us leave with the mallet, that's everyone's cue to rush Shining Needle Castle. Final checks. Everyone ready? Ron, Lady Yukari, we got a situation. Shocked Yukari. Uh, change of plans. Miko. Oh no. Byakuren, what are the Tsukumogami doing? They look up at Shine Needle Castle and there's a giant layer of new Tsukumogami surrounding them. Yukari, fighting in Amanajaku is truly a battle of wits. She must have figured out what I was up to, so she's going to make sure that we can't sneak past her. Miko, 
If she wants to slow us down, I say we all push in at once. Yukari. Monojaku think much more ahead than that. What, we re what this really means is even if we break through, we'll either have no time or fall into another trap. Consider yourself lucky I'm here to stop you from doing any more foolish mistakes. Seija may be cunning, but she's forgotten. She's facing the most cunning yokai of all, picks up the communicator orb. Aya, I want you to postpone sending the warning to Misty Lake. Aya, flying over Misty Lake. Ikari, what's the meaning of this? Seija changed her strategy, but she also may have shot herself in the foot. Delay the alert, and we might just have a shot at stopping Seija's trap. Trust me, Aya. It's the only way to get the mallet back. Aya, looking at the other Tengu. All flights break off from Misty Lake. Looks like the Gap Yoke guy is going to try to trip up Seija's plans. Solid copy, Shimamaru. Proceeding to Nameless Hill. Wide shot of the Tengu flying away. Yakimo, you better know what you're doing. Meanwhile, Kagero and Wakasagihime are battling at Misty Lake. For those that don't know, Kagero has defected to the good guy's side. Kagero firing at Wakasagihime. Waka, please, cease your fire at once. We've all been tricked. The Tsukumogami used us to take over Gensokyo. Wakasagihime. I saw the humans with my own eyes. They attacked me without remorse. It's just like you said. The strong oppress the weak. If anything, they tricked you. Now you become their puppets. Stop it, Waka. You're my friend. I don't want to fight you. Kagero pleading for her life. This isn't like you at all. Whatever happened to us, uh... Whatever happened to us just playing together and having fun? Since when did you care about the politics of this land? Wakasagihime. My Ship eyes em. have been... Oh, what was that? Ship him. Ship him? Yeah. Hmm? Don't worry, that's coming later. In Chapter 9, yeah. I believe. Yeah, this is this is gonna this is gonna make the shippers none too pleased to have them fighting each other. Well, uh, well, everyone's gonna get together in the end. They're like, I'm I'm gonna put the grassroots yokai through hell in chapter eight, <laughs> especially Seki Bonky near the end where she overhears Sage just saying, "Oh, the grassroots yokai are useless to me." Once I take over Gensokyo, I'm gonna kill them too. Hmm. But of course, oh. that's when Seki Bonki realizes what's going on and hears Raiko crying for help, throws her head in, and have you seen the movie uh, Total Recall? <laughs> Get ready for a big surprise! <laughs> I'm more like I don't know. I'm Makuta Desrex yes. slash Malafa slash whatever the fuck you want to call me. Yo. Sorry, I just thought I'd introduce myself, so yeah, I'm here. Okay, welcome. Alright, trying to go uh, through this as fast as I can so I can actually get some writing time done, or else I'll save it for tomorrow and use this as the recap for now, but... Okay, either way, this is like a good time to like get critiques on what I have so far, so again, stop me if something seems out of place. Okay. Uh, just recently hard. joined, and it Seems all right so far. Okay. Wakasagihime. There is no future for the weak uh, unless we rise against the strong. Wakasagihime lands a critical blan on Kagero. Crying Kagero. Please stop it. It hurts. Crazy eyed Wakasagihime. I bet it does if the strong felt any pain. We walk on different paths now. I'll remain weak, but I'll still be who I am inside. But you betrayed the... But you decided to betray your friends for the sake of the strong. Terrified Kagero, looking at Wakasagihime speaking. I'm not the one who's changed. It's you, and you cannot accept it. And once a weak reclaims the land for the strong, I hope you're ready to die for what you believe in. Wakasagihime fires everything she's got at the camera. Kagero, no! A swarm of Seki Bonki heads uh, jump out in front of her. Uh, wide shot of Seki Bonki's heads absorb all Wakasagihime shots, perfect, protecting Kagero. Bonki, what are you doing here? Seki Bonki, Wakasagihime, don't! I need to speak to Kagero! It's a uh, back shot of Seki Bonki looking at Kagero. Bonki, stand aside! Miss Imazumi has betrayed the grassroots yokai. Okay, that's Wakasagihime speaking. Okay, so that should say, looking at Wakasa... 
Gihime. Alright, see you later, Sniper and Sandra. Okay, Seki Bonki, nervous Kagero behind her. Kagero would never betray us. Even the great Yokai Sage told me that Kagero would show me my true enemy. Back shot of Seki Bonki looking at Kage uh, Ka uh, Kagero. Seki Bonki, the Tsukumogami used us. They're working with the Amano Jaku to save Gensokyo. Her goal isn't to save the weak, but plunge Gensokyo into an era of chaos. Seki Bonki, I see. And the Sage was right. I've discovered who my true enemy is, and it's you. You're trying to tear the grassroots yokai network for the <laughs> apart for the humans, aren't you? I suppose Waka's right. You really are a traitor. A giant musical staff roll surrounds Seki Baki and Waka Sagihime. What the? Giant explosion of musical notes. Ben Ben and Yatsuhashi rush at the camera. Don't you lay a finger on Miss Kage uh, Miss Kagero. Otherwise, you're gonna have to go through us first. Tatsukumo sisters, what are you doing here? They look at each other. Wait a minute. Don't you lay a finger on Miss oh. Kagero. Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you for the typo. Catch. Catching the typo, I mean. The typo catch. Okay. Wait a minute. Bonky. Oh, yeah. This should be... Okay. Wakasagi Hime and Seki Bonky. No, Seki Bonky, not Seki Nanki. What? <laughs> Here's my original character, Seki Nanki. Please don't steal. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Seki Nani. <laughs> Dang it. Please. Is that the first JoJo meme this evening, or is... That was more of a this reference a to Blaze Blue, but that'll work too. And I really need to expand the number of anime I watch if the only thing I think of is jo then again. Okay, so to sum this one up, uh, the Tsukumo sisters are now uh, like they believe Miss uh, Kagero, but meanwhile, Seki Bonki and Wakasagihime are still fighting them. Then you've uh, uh, then you all betrayed us. We're the only ones who can overthrow the strong now. Don't they realize... Oh, wait, they're not in their right minds. I was about to say, don't they realize that in oppressing others, they become the strong? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, he's, actually, Yatsuhashi is even like, isn't this enough proof that Seija just wants to spread chaos? Sekivanki is like, nothing will change my mind. If chaos means finally getting to feel strong, then let chaos reign. Kagero, nothing's gonna change their minds, is there? Ben Ben, I'm sorry, Miss Kagero, but it's too late for them. Yatsuashi, if it's any consolation, there's been again Sokyo wide alert about the Amano Jaku with a reward for her capture. We could still join the hunting party and fight back. Unfortunately, when this is all over, the grassroots yokai network will be no more. Angry Kagero, I hope you're happy with what you did to my friends. Angry Ben Ben, you're not the only one who got used. I swear, Seijo will rot for what she's done. So they uh, make their escape. Sekibanki and Wakasagihime watch, the, watch as they escape. That's right, run like the cowards you are. Wakasagihime. Strange, I never heard anyone announcing a reward for Seijo's capture. Sekibanki. Me neither. The Tsukumo sisters must have lied about that too. I suppose I'll find Seijo myself and alert her to what the Tsukumo sisters are doing. Now does uh, Yukari's plan make sense? Mm. Um, wait, bit so... Bit. bit by bit. Yukari I asked Aya to not uh, not send out the alert to Misty Lake until later. Oh, I get it. Oh. And it's going to make even more sense I in think. a second. It's all coming um, together. It's a giant chess game can't... between Seija and Yukari at this point. <laughs> at least behind the scenes, anyway. Well, let's see who gets the checkmate first. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> Chapter 8 ends with Seija getting a check. Oof! I'm too much Fire Emblem, no, no. but that gives me the image of... 
Yukaria as Robin and Valba. I'm sorry, I'm I'm going off on a tangent. Apologies. That's okay. No, no, you're uh, you're on topic. It's better than talking about Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of hearing people bitch about Waluigi not being in it. No, I'm, I'm referencing <laughs> Sandra constantly Just... talking about Super Smash Brothers in the chat. And Fire, well, that and Fire Emblem is arguably closer if you really look at it to what's going on. Arch, I, political, I chaotic. Know, I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't know. I haven't exactly played Fire Emblem. Me neither. Good. But, what else? Alright, so anyway, we're back in the Shining Needle Castle. The, uh, Sakia's, uh, Sage slams Sakia into a wall. She breaks free. Okay, here's where I, uh, last left off, and, uh... Okay, yeah, that's the note that I, uh... Okay, this is what I worked on before work today. Sage slams to the ground. Sage laughs. What a bunch of hypocrites. You claim to fight for the weak, but when the weak finally act for themselves, you attack without mercy. Angry Sakya. But you attacked Gensokyo! Sakya gets point blank by Sage's shots. I never did anything. You were all going to attack me first. I was, I was acting in self defense. Preemptive self defense. Okay. I... What was that? It does not mean what you think it means. Sorry, I just never mind. I actually think that's a reference to Love Hina the Abridged series. I was acting in self defense, but you attacked first. It was preemptive self defense. I know, I was, tr I was trying to, I think I was trying to quote a Princess Bride, just for some reason. I'm weird. Okay. Sorry, continue. All right. Marissa fires at the camera. Face it, Seija. You already lost. Your rebellions failed, and your subordinates are starting to realize you all lied. You lied to them all. You can't win, so give up. Seija dodges their shots. Lied? I never lied. I showed them all the truth. The dark side of Gensokyo. Everyone wants to sweep under the rug and never wants to admit. I showed them that Gensokyo is a land where those in power decide what is good or evil. Where the so-called heroes are self-righteous monsters. Or everyone's only in it for themselves. But there is only one truth in this world. There is no such thing as good or evil. There is only the weak and the strong. The strong decide uh, what is right or wrong so they can stay in power and then force the weak into believing the same. But now it's time for the misfits, the rebels, the outcasts, the weak to decide. We will overturn society and redraw the political borders against Sokyo. The strong will lose their power, the weak will rule, and the humans will be crushed under our heels. See, one of Marissa's shots hit Seija, blasting her into a wall. Marissa. Well, now, we don't want that to happen, do we? Sakia. Unfortunately for you, I fight for the humans. Says the devil's maid, but honestly, humans would be, f humans would be far more comfortable under my new rule. Wide shot of Seija jumping up and dueling the heroines. Sage of Fires at everyone. No more power struggles. No more backstabbing each other for more power. No more lying to gain influence. Sake gets hit. And instead, Sage leaps through a gap and hits Reimu. Marissa aims at Sage, but misses. Sage of Hand glows and she flips her into the ceiling. It will be a world where humans know what to expect. And what you should expect is eternal humiliation and the pain you have. See. And what you should expect is the eternal humiliation and pain you have forced on the weak. Forever. Struggling Marissa. You're insane. You're absolutely insane. Say, uh, Seija. Ha. I'm insane? I'm the liberator of, Gen of I'm the liberator of Gensokyo. The anti-hero of the weak. But you. How many innocent yokai have you exterminated out of paranoia? How many did you fail to save because rescuing them wouldn't benefit you? How many incidents did you help create, all so you could take credit for solving them? You're no heroes. You're all just a bunch of selfish, monstrous hypocrites, only in it for yourselves. Why else do you think I could have united so much of the weak to fight back? Smiling Marissa. That's not what I meant, but it just goes to show you're even more insane than I thought. 
What I meant was, you're insane if you think you can win. Rimu's wand gets up and flies at her and attacks her. Rissa, ha! We're still even. Rimu, it's only a matter of time now. Surrender or pay the price, Seija. Seija battles Rimu's wand. Only a matter of time until what? Until my defeat? Seija bats away the wand to the wall. Seija, or could you possibly mean... Until that worthless drum Tsukumogami steals the miracle mallet. Da da da. The mission is compromised. The mission is compromised. Yep. Let's see. Psycho realist. I don't know what the fuck. Let's see. Diamond Black says she's more or less a psycho realist, right? Well, actually, uh, Raiko stands against everything that uh, say like. Uh, the way I've written Raiko in this is that she is Seija's opposite. She is everything that Seija thinks she is, but she actually does it. I think I think they were referring to Seija herself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Seija herself. I don't know. It's Seija is written as an Amanajaku, so her only goal is just to contradict everyone, even if it doesn't make sense. Because for all of her talk about how, like, oh, the strong oppress the weak, the everyone else's idea is like, no, the strong help out the weak, and the weak can become strong. It's just Seija, in, in this con context, is just nuts. Yeah, because... Yeah, no, like, by the fact that no one seems... She doesn't seem to realize that in crushing... By, by, by basically gaining power and doing all the things she accuses all the people of being in power do, then she's no better than them, right? Comes the thing she fought against. But not only does she not see that, but she accuses everyone else of changing and becoming the very thing they hate as well. Well, like, I read somewhere, I think on TV tropes, that a monojaku is often used as an insult in Japanese for those who, like, constantly contradict others. And in this, I want Seija to <laughs> constantly contradict literally everything she and other people says and does throughout the whole story. Ooh, that's devious. That's devious and... Yeah, it requires a bit of a, like, a... I'm to say something and then my mind kind of just spun out so it's devious and i love it all righty it's rock solid anyway we're almost to where we uh, uh we're almost to where we're caught up okay back shot of right goes she guns her way down the hall she runs up to a door she opens it and there's shinmyo Muro inside petrified hello you're a tsukumogami aren't you have you come to join our rebellion Raiko approaches cautiously not quite Miss Inchling, I'm not here to hurt you. There is something you must know about the mallet. Wait a minute, I know you. You're that drum that ran off when everything got out of hand. Wait a minute, Miss Inchling, there is something wrong with... Miss Raiko, please, save me. And she's crying while she says this. Meanwhile, outside, the Tsukumogami are dispersing outside of Shining Needle Castle. Oh, where does it say her? Mm -hmm. Oh, right, there it is. So this are not here. <laughs> here to hurt you. Alright, thanks, Three Eyes. Okay. The Tsukumogami dispersed outside of Shiny Needle Castle. Miko. It looks like the Tsukumogami are on the move, but why? Yukari, smiling up. It appears my secondary distraction was a success. Of course, I pity poor Kagero and the Tsukumo sisters, but they have a karmic debt to pay. Okay, everyone, begin the uh, Salt of Shining Needle Castle at once. We cannot allow Seija to attain the mallet's power. Uh, let's see, Mamizo. Miss Yakimo, I do hope you live up to your reputation. The yokai speak of you as a legend, from my native Sato to as far as distant Mugenri. Please, do not let us down. Yukari, 
You clearly doubt my abilities, Miss Mamizo, but soon you will see the power that has protected Gensokyo for centuries. Miko, here we come, Seija! Someone on the ground. Good luck up there. Also, as far as distant Mugenri. <laughs> That name, that location sounds familiar. I do not remember from where. It's a Lenin reference. What uh, reference? Lenin. It's like a sister series to Toho Project. The guy basically it. took Gensokyo and made their own little version of it called New Genry. It's slightly more ruthless than, uh, than uh, Gensokyo, but it's... At the end of the day, it's it's hard to describe. It's like Toho, but not quite like Toho. It has the same art style, but it's a little bit darker and more muted colors. It has the same setting, but it's also a little more uh, action-y. But it's still funny and goofy, like comic fantasy. Anyway. All right. Okay, meanwhile, back in the uh, room with Raiko and Sukuna. You're right, Miss Raiko. Sage is a monster. She's planning on destroying Gensokyo, just like you thought. I never went apart in any of this. Sage lied to me, tricked me, used me, like everyone else. Raiko, I'm sorry, Miss Inchling, but not to worry. I'm here to save you. Whatever is causing this, it is coming from the mallet. So, uh, tearfully smiling Sukuna, dot, 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 question mark. Yes, I understand. You really are brave for doing this, you know. Only you could ever stand up to Seija like this. Please, brave Tsukumogami, take the Miracle Mallet and save the Tsukumogami from Seija. Scared, oh, Scared Raiko. That tone. <laughs> that tone. <laughs> Why does that sound? Raiko. That, this is not... <laughs> Wait. Something's not right. Miss Raiko, what's wrong? I know an ambush when I see one. If you're afraid, then take the Miracle Mallet. Hurry, Miss Raiko. The mallet is the only way to stop them. And she's giving him a creepy smile. Raiko. Okay, I have an idea, but it's gonna require some finesse. Ha! Raiko blasts Sukuna, but it's actually not Sukuna. It's actually a yoka. It's actually a Tsukumogami, and then shatters into like a bunch of pieces like all the other Tsukumogami have throughout this comic. And in her hand, there's a UFO item. Raiko looks down at the fragmented uh. Tsukumogami and the UFO item. Just as I thought, a Tsukumogami using a seed of the unknown form. They emit a presence of whatever the observer wants. Good thing we left that fairy behind, or she would have fallen for it more quickly. Or she would have fallen for it more quickly <laughs> than me. Oh yeah! And previously, Yukari sent Cherno after the heroines in hopes of triggering that trap that Raiko just fell into. But literally feel... using literally using Cyrano as a minesweeper. Yeah. I love it. Oof. But I feel the mount's true power not far away. Maybe I still have time before the door slams behind Raiko. We've got you now! She was after the mallet, just like Seijo warned us. The Tsukumo got me come out of hiding. She is surrounded in all directions. <laughs> Terrified Raiko. Wait. Apprehension. <laughs> Lady Yakimo set that fairy after us because, by the gods, what have we done? Time to die, Raiko Horikawa! She desperately <laughs> fires in all directions to stop her, and we cut away to a, a distant shot of the closed door down the hall. She screams. So, oh, so this is, this like is a, Raiko. Uh, Where are we taking her? Top side. Her question. Raiko, what the hell for? Raiko. Let's kill her now! If they find the body. What body? <laughs> <laughs> Raiko? Raiko! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Raiko, you stupid idiot. What? Wait. What kind of accent was going that? Going on. The sooner, you, the sooner you disconnect from whatever the fuck is going on and join the madness, the better. Raiko, you stupid idiot. <laughs> okay, now here's where uh, we start making new stuff. So then, uh, I'm thinking first, like, they're all looking up. They're all looking out at the screen. Okay. 
Remu, Marissa, Sakia. Oh. Let's see, look down the hall in horror. All right, I think we're shutting down for yeah. the night. Okay. But still, uh, any uh, comments, oh, criticism, or night. anything? Oh, um, on my part, or I guess in my perspective, per perspective, perspective, um, I'm actually very much enjoying this. I don't exactly see anything wrong as far as I know. Uh, All right. What about you, Chris? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think I'll have to keep up with this a little better. Okay. Yo, permit me. I'll upload hmm. all this to like my little like uh, preview page thing, my jig when it's all done. And I'm gonna like spend maybe a month or two. Uh, I probably won't get it done in time for the uh, five year anniversary of Double Dealing Character, but I want this to be, as I said, the dinner killer. I want this to be like the comic that I will be remembered for. But if I can say one thing, damn, it has me shaking. <laughs> well. This is more just a piece of advice. What? You... Just working from a relatively narrow mindset, but I can safely say you are not the kind of per Like, I do not judge you or your work based purely on Ditter. Oh, a yeah. A fraction of your work. And I don't really get why people judge you solely on Ditter when you've made a lot of other shit have improved since Ditter, which admittedly, no offense meant, but there were some really kind of bad points about Ditter. Not all of it, but... No, I understand. It's just there are some points that people bring up that make zero sense, like how even though like it premiered and was originally developed back in 2012, it was somehow based on things that happened in 2013, even though it, all the reshoots were for lighter-hearted stuff in 2013, funny enough. But I do get the whole, like, oh, the ending's confusing, or oh, I do get that, like, there's too much meta-commentary and not enough story, but a lot of it's intentional. It's supposed to be more of a meta story than a straight Toho fic. Still there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just. Someone made a brass bucket. A Walfus prop for the brass bucket TF2 cosmetic, and. Um, well, yeah, it looks okay. amazing. Sorry. Sorry, I know that's completely unrelated. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, good night, guys. All right, good night. All right, yeah. good night. I'll try to maybe try to keep up with this a little better, so I can like develop maybe some 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 more thoughtful uh like critiques and thoughts okay yeah i mean the the only reason why i haven't given a more detailed criticism of the new th of wrath of mana jaku is because i just haven't been keeping up with it and don't really have enough information to formed criti critique of it it's okay that's actually what i get from what? a lot of folks really solid but there are some shortcomings but again it's difficult for me to exactly elaborate on what those are as of the time of speaking right. but no worries uh when we finally get to the uh when i finally finish chapter 10 i'm going to like do a back to front rewrite re-edit uh i want this to be plot hole proof critique proof not like critique proof but like i want it to be like one of the most solid stories like before i do the art i want this to be like a solid solid story well here's my suggestion on that front in addition to going over it yourself send like 
maybe one or two copies of what you have you know for peer review that's what i do with most of the papers i write no no i no i uh that's but that's what i do too that's why i'm streaming it that that's technically what this is and i also have a page for all the previous chapters that i finished and when it's all done i'm gonna do like weekly like meetings to like go over okay how can we improve this chapter how can we make this better more suggesting something along the lines of you send it like what you have down to a couple of other people say read through this say what works say what doesn't but that's what that's why i said it's i i have an open beta system anyone can peer review my stuff anyone like heck let me actually open up the page itself not what i'm uh no, I like you're right saying now, I should uh, like take maybe a uh, individual copies and send them to people I know for uh, beta reading, individual right? Individual copies, give them to specific people you trust to give a honest criticism of something for you're already doing. Like having it like someone go through and just mark what works or what needs clarification. Concise experience out of both the open beta style and sending it to a couple of specific individuals who stuff who can give you an accurate, you know, can give you an honest and what doesn't. But both again, that's that's what I plan on doing. Also, here's the page where I plan to put all the uh, you can read the beta version immediately. Like I don't like. I don't know how to put it into words myself. I just know that, like, once I get chapter 10 done, I'm going to, like, get the story out to as many people as I can and, like, weigh their opinions against each other and see, like, wh what I should do next. So far, um, I suppose the most, most solid critique I have is that some of the dialogue, I think, could be more compact. I know. I've actually gotten that criticism, too, from someone else. Okay. I'm going to, like... Part of the rewrites is getting the dialogue polished in character and, like, not just writing it to get it on page. It's going to be, like... Like, there's, like, the the, the other person who's reading it uh, gave me the suggestion of, like, if it can't be acted out, re uh, rewrite it. Like, you hmm. can't easily say it out loud. Though, for Sage's dialogue, I do want to keep it as written because I want it to sound unnatural. Hmm. Probably because she is unnatural. Yeah. And that's... No, that you know, makes... The, the opposite of, you know, normal speech. You're... Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the extent of my thoughts right now. Okay. So, gotta get to bed. Ironically enough, Ophi and I being in, like, uh, further out west, going to bed sooner than you guys, but... It's okay, so I actually I guess. have work at noon tomorrow and I gotta drop off HTF at work at nine, so uh I actually come to think I, I think probably we're uh, I think we're done for the night. Uh well I wanted to get a little bit more done, but at least let me start the new working file for chapter eight D. No, chapter eight E. Alright, good night. Good night to you. And good night Opie. And also good night to everyone else, because I guess for this stream it was mainly a recap and a uh, critique of what I have so far of Chapter 8. But luckily, uh, the uh, Fire and Fury scene works, so that's good to hear. So, sorry for the folks who wanted to see more the making of Spazniko Make Stuff Live, but at least we have Spazniko Critique Stuff Live, I guess. <laughs> Right. Either way, it's good to like catch up so we know where the chapter is going. So I guess we'll call tonight. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Good night. That, <laughs> good night. See you folks later. Okay. Good night.